Um, well, basically, the kids were the kids are six and four. So, you know, we were living in L.A. So the idea of actually going on tour again, mm. um, I would have sort of had to leave them for maybe three, four months to do a tour if we were living in America and the kids were there. So I didn't want to do that. And then I always think that with comedy, you have to have something to say. And I wanted to sort of write something about the way I see the world going. And when you're from Northern Ireland and you grew up in a divided society that managed to find a middle ground and make peace, it's an interesting time to see the rest of the world weirdly and the rest of Britain, I think, kind of go in different directions. When you say you, you needed to have something to say before you went back on tour. Do you really think anything has happened over the last six or seven years, really? <laughs> What's happened? Any, any, it's, it's been quite uneventful. No, 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 let's, let's, talk, let's talk COVID and what that was like for, for you and Kat and the boys. How did you manage that? Well, I mean, we, we were in LA and we came home at the start of 2020. We came home to see family. We came home to get the kids into schools in England. And we spent the, the 18 months seeing nobody and teaching them ourselves. So it's that weird thing of the secret of comedy is timing. So that, that really worked out. I mean, I came back thinking I was going to, you know, end up doing this tour and then you have lockdown. So just just to get life back to some type of normality with you know kids in school and audiences coming out again, it's, it's quite nice. It is quite nice, uh, but I want to talk to you about Borderline because it is a politically charged show. You say that yourself, don't you? I mean, how do you pull that off into a comedy format? How do you make people laugh? I mean, I would say with UK politics at the minute, you kind of just have to say what's happening. <laughs> it writes itself, doesn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, it's I mean, no, no, normally, no, normally, you know, with uh, with satire, you kind of have to take the facts, then you mm. have to sort of put the punchline on top. Uh, at the minute, you kind of just have to say the facts, and they're, they're, and they're funny enough. I also wonder, you, saw, you talked about that the best comedy has truth in it. Obviously, we can't ignore the war in Ukraine, border problems there with Russia. Does that talk into some of the stuff that you're doing at the moment? Um, it doesn't directly, but it definitely does generally. You know, I think that um, a lot of this show is very personal about growing up as a kid in Northern Ireland, thinking that you lived in somewhere amazing, which it mm -hmm. was realizing that there's such a fine line between living somewhere brilliant and life not being good at all. I mean, I'm speaking to you now from, you know, the village I was born. This is, you know, where I grew up. I'm looking out at four miles of beach. I'm looking at the Mourne Mountains. Life is amazing. I can also take you a mile down the road to where my father was killed during the Troubles. And so there's a really fine line between life being ordinary and it being extraordinary. Um, I think Kenneth Branagh's film Belfast really shows that from a dramatic point of view. And I think if you look at what's going on in Ukraine, when you look at people who had normal lives and how things can just change. And I think that some of the stuff in the tour for me is about little decisions that you think don't have an effect on things, mm. sometimes end up having a butterfly effect mm. and having an effect. So maybe you need to think about those things before you go too far down the road. Thank you so much. So good to have you guys back on tour. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Thank, Thank you, Patrick. You. Thanks so much.